All right, our last live coming to you from Southern California here. Happy Monday. It's uh, October 1st. Ooh, 2018. Love it. One day closer to Christmas. <laughs> and one day closer to the return of Jesus, by the way. Yeah. All right, everybody's on board. Canada, Mexico, join Trump. Headline news, Trump talks New Deal. Trump delivers remarks on U.S.-Mexico-Canada agreement. Oh, love it. U.S.-Mexico-Canada agreement. Now, Canada was holding out to, to the last minute. As of last night, yesterday, Canada, okay, okay, <laughs> okay, Bob, okay, Trump, we're going to jump in the deal with you and do a uh, trilateral, right, agreement. Uh, people call it uh, NAFTA in the news, but really NAFTA is really being done away with because NAFTA was a bad deal. So Trump has a new deal, right, and uh, hey, I'm calling this Canada and Mexico join Trump. <laughs> not join the USA, but join Trump. And this is going to make, this is, and, and will continue to make uh, Trump's enemies angry. Because no matter how much Trump's enemies attack him, he always comes up with these great deals. Ah, oh, he's the worst president ever, blah, blah, blah. He hates women, he hates Mexicans, he hates Canadians, he hates everybody. <laughs> and yet he's making the deal with the North Koreans, he's making the deal with the Russians, he's making the deal with the Canadians, the Mexicans. Uh-huh. It's your birthday. Happy happy birthday. Yeah. Well, it's a great deal. I think it really is. I watched um, President Trump this morning at the White House giving a, uh, really, a press announcement. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. He said other presidents really didn't do anything. Whether you're talking to China or Brazil or other countries, other past presidents didn't make any deals, didn't want to give good deals to their own people. Trump asked these leaders of these, uh, well, of, of a lot of countries and said, oh, you know, how come we have such crappy deals when it comes to trade? Well, your presidents didn't ask for anything. Oh, and it just reiterates, it just proves my point that I keep on saying it over and over, that past U.S. presidents worked for the New World Order, the deep state. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, Bob. Sure they did. Yeah. All right. Trump delivers remarks on U.S.-Mexico agreement. Mexico-Canada agreement. U.S.-Mexico-Canada agreement. Yeah. There's one Fox News. Trump announces the United States-Mexico-Canada agreement. Delivers remarks. Uh, this, this is four hours ago, five hours ago. Uh, brilliant. I'm going to read here an article from FinancialPost.com. Really, uh, this is really the heart of what I really th find is uh, exciting. What is? Well, here's one. Donald Trump hails Canada-Mexico trade pact as a great deal for all sides. I'm telling you, I, I, I've been saying this. What Trump's doing here in the U.S. is not just for the U.S. It's for North America and for the world because we're all connected. And when this article posted this headline, I thought that's exactly what's happening. This trade pact is a great deal for all sides. Yeah. Uh, when countries are stable and are growing and are prosperous, it brings stability to other countries and other parts of the world. And the whole world, really. So I agree. Uh... New trade deal, new trade deal. Oh, love it. Here's one, new trade deal. A great day for North America. Yeah. And North America doesn't just have, uh, you know, three countries. People think North America is Canada, U.S., and Mexico. No. <laughs> How many? I think, there's, I think there's 100, right? 120 or something. How many countries in North Africa? No, North, North America. How many countries in North America? Yeah, I mean, most people think of just these three countries, but no, 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 no. Tw oh, did I say 100? Whoops. <laughs> I was thinking of 23. <laughs> there are 23 countries in North America and nine dependent territories. All right, so just thought I'd throw that in there. Yeah, there's only 100 and, what is it, 96 countries, 94 countries around the world, right? I'm taking you to school, right? How many countries? It's 195 in the world. I think, it's, I think it's 196 if you... Well, some people debate it. Whatever. 195 countries. <clears throat> there you go. All right, so there's 23 countries in North America. Yeah. <clears throat> with nine dependent territories with the United States. <clears throat> excuse me, America being the largest and sent kits and this being the smallest by population. Most, when most people think of North America, they think of two countries. Well, I think of three. 
and I say it's uh, of America and Canada, I, I think, well, I know better, but <clears throat> people always think, usually United States, Canada, Mexico. <clears throat> but you're forgetting 20 other countries <laughs> in North America, my friend. Yeah. All right. Of the seven continents of the world. <clears throat> All right. Let me get to this. Uh, but I'm going to read some of the headlines here first. Let me see. Uh, Trump presents the... Uh, uh, oh, that, that was this morning. U.S. and Canada reach a deal. U.S. and Canada reach a deal on NAFTA or the trade deal. NAFTA is really dead. <clears throat> that was a last minute thing. Mexico was on board. And now we have these three countries, right? The trilateral trade pack, I call it, right? Donald Trump, <clears throat> excuse me, hails Canada-Mexico trade pack as a great deal for all sides. Trump on Twitter today called the U.S. agreement with Canada wonderful and a historic tran transaction. Yeah, I love it. Oh, by the way, I was looking up some Bible scriptures. <clears throat> the Bible's the best book on the planet, so you, if you're going to quote anybody... People quote uh, the Beatles. People quote uh, philosophers. I quote the Bible. Best book <clears throat> in history. I quote from it all the time. Yeah. You know, uh, I got, well, let me just read some of these verses. Uh, I think uh, when I think of Donald Trump, President Trump, I think of Joseph in the Bible, in, in the book of Genesis. Uh, yeah. Abraham, Isaac, uh, and Jacob. And Jacob had his sons. And one of the sons was Joseph. Yeah. And Joseph saved not only his people, but the world from starvation. And I believe that God brought Trump in, not just to save uh, the USA, but to save Mexico, Canada, and the nation. Yeah. Look at this, Genesis 50, chapter 50, verse 18. And the, then Joseph, 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 Joseph's brother, say that to them, uh, came and threw themselves down before Joseph. I call Joseph, yeah, really, a, a Trump figure. Yeah, or Trump is a Joseph figure. Yeah. Look, we are your slaves, they said. But Joseph replied, don't be afraid of me. Don't be afraid of Trump. Am I God? Verse 20, you intended to harm me. How many people don't like in the media and the New World doesn't like Trump? You intended to attack me, but God intended this for good. He brought me to this position so I could save the lives of many people, not just the U.S. Now, of course, I'm using this as an example here from Joseph, Joseph's life. In the book of Genesis, but nevertheless, this is for our example of modern day miracles. Yeah. So I'm just interchanging here, Joseph and Trump. You intended me harm, but God intended it for good. He brought me to this position so I could save the lives of many people. Mexican people, Canadian, American, European, Russian. Yeah. And he says here in verse 21, uh, Genesis 50, verse 21, No, don't be afraid. I will continue to take care of you. That's what Trump's doing. And your children. So he reassured them by speaking kindly to them. Genesis chapter 12, verse 2, And I will make of thee a great nation. You know, make America great again is basically from the scriptures. But it's not just make America great again. It's other nations. Yeah. Your nation. My videos that I do are going into every nation of the world every day. Yeah. I get the analytics back from YouTube. I will make thee a great nation, and I will bless you, and I will make your name great, and you shall be a blessing to the nation. This is what's on Trump's life. The opposite was true of past U.S. presidents, especially Obama and people with him. Yeah. Obama, the Clintons, the Bushes. <laughs> They were in name only that they were Americans and they loved this country. But they really didn't love this country because they were systematically destroying it from behind the scenes. Yeah. You shall be a blessing, Trump, to the nation. And I'm talking about Canada, Mexico joining Trump. A trade deal. Uh, verse uh, Gen uh, Galatians 3.14, that the blessing of Abraham, which I read from Genesis 12 too, just right now, might come on the nations, <clears throat> might come on the nations, might come on the Gentiles, which are, are the nations. The blessing of Abraham might come on the, on the Gentiles, on the nations, through Jesus Christ. What? See, through the nations. The Lord's not just concerned about the U.S., but by the Lord bringing Trump into the position, he's not only affecting this country, but the nations and being a blessing. You shall be a blessing. You shall be a blessing. I will make you a great nation. I will make other nations great. That's the blessing of Abraham that comes on the nations through Jesus Christ, through Trump's life. 
Proverbs 29, 2, when the righteous are in authority, in government, president, the good ones, not the deep state, the people rejoice when the wicked rule, bear, bear rule, that's Obama and these past U.S. presidents, the people mourn. Look at Proverbs 29, which I'm in right now. I read from verse 2. Verse 4, a just king, a just president, gives stability to his nation and the nations. One who demands bribes destroys it. Oh, that's past U.S. presidents, but not Trump. Proverbs 29.4, Pro Proverbs 29.5, to flatter friends is to, to lay a trap for their feet. The thing I like about Trump, he's not flattering. <laughs> he got a little bit of trouble today because he kind of uh, was not flattering toward a female uh, reporter. Oh, but he, tra he, tra he treats the, the females and the males the same. Yeah, he does. Just doesn't like corrupt media. To flatter friends to lay a trap. Now, Trump doesn't do that. Verse 7. The godly care about the rights of the poor. The wicked don't care at all. That's why the people around the world, from presidents to prime ministers, say, your, your past presidents never made any deals good for the people. They never asked us to change any of the... We, we took care of our people, and we took advantage of the trade deals from your pres, past presidents. But they never asked to have good deals for their people. Well, why, why not? Why not? Because the Vatican controls the past U.S. president. And they wanted to break down this country and therefore domino effect the countries, all countries, into the New World Order. The godly care about the rights of the people. But the wicked don't care at all. That's Obama. And the Clintons and the Bushes and past U.S. presidents. Probably back to 150 years, probably back to 1871. Probably back to Abraham Lincoln. Proverbs 29, verse 16. When the wicked are in authority, sin flourishes. That's past U.S. president. But the godly will live to see their downfall. Right now, Obama's uh, legacy is getting destroyed. I love it. Verse 25. Fearing people is a dangerous trap. I see Trump doesn't, doesn't fear Canada, doesn't fear Mexico, doesn't fear anybody. Fearing people is a dangerous trap. That's why Trump's you know, not caught in a trap. But trusting the Lord means safety. Trump is a born-again spiritual Christian. Verse 27, the righteous despise the, un the, righteous despise the unjust. Yeah, you can see that Trump's Twitter feeds and his actions, he just despises how the U.S. has been treated unjustly. And the wicked despise the godly. Yeah, I noticed that the wicked... Uh, uh, the wicked people on the earth, they're the ones that hate Trump. Just saying, Bob. I'm just saying. All right, let me read the article right here. I think it's a fantastic heading. Donald Trump hails Canada-Mexico trade pact as a great deal for all sides. Again, back to the scriptures. President Trump hailed Canada, uh, hailed Canada today after the two countries forged a last-minute deal to, to sa salvage their trilateral accord. I call it NAFTA here, but NAFTA has really been redone. With Mexico, U.S., Canada, marking a key victory in, the, in Trump's leaders, his effort, his leadership effort to shake up global trade. The deal announced yesterday is reworking of the 94 American Free Trade Agreement, NAFTA, which is really, it's actually replacing it, which underpins uh, $1.2 trillion in trade. That's a lot of money between the three countries. $1.2 trillion. Trump had described NAFTA as a bad deal for Americans and threatened to eliminate it as part of the America First agenda. New United States-Mexico-Canada agreement, USMCA, is aimed at bringing more jobs to the U.S. and to other nations. More jobs into the U.S. with Canada and Mexico accepting more restrictive commerce with the U.S., their main export partner. Yeah, fair trade. Fair trade. He wants fair trade. They didn't have to join. Canada could have stayed out of it. Mexico, but they said, hey, we want in. Oh, who's the winner? Chicken dinner. While changing, really replacing NAFTA and bringing down U.S. trade deficits was the top Trump campaign pledge. Well, you know, he just said what he meant and meant what he said. And it's easy for him to fulfill his promises because he's not a liar. A top Trump campaign pledge. Sunday's agreement largely leaves the broad deal intact and maintains current supply chains that would have been fractured under weaker bilateral deals. Well, not really. The, the, the deals are changed. You're still dealing with the three countries. 
But the mainstream media finds it very difficult to say that Trump's doing something great because they're paid not to. Yeah. So they're not going to say, I'll say it's the same thing. It's still, still a bacon, lettuce, tomato sandwich. No, it's a total different, it's a total different trade deal. Trump, who said he would hold a news conference today, he did. And on Twitter, called the U.S. agreement with his neighbors to the north. Wonderful. And a historic transaction, which Canada was the last to really join the, the pact. Trump said again, it's a great deal for all three countries. That's what I'm saying. It's not just make America great again. It's make Canada great again. It's make Mexico great. A great deal for all three countries. Solves the many deficiencies and mistakes in NAFTA. North Atlantic Free Trade Agreement, that's what it was called. Greatly opens markets to our farmers and manufacturers. Reduces trade barriers to the U.S. and will bring all three great nations closer together. Competition with the rest of the world. What's wrong with that, Bob? He, did, he actually tweeted this out 3.30 a.m. in the morning. You know, when Obama was, was out with, uh, you know, his crazy party friends doing this, that, and the other of, of evil, uh, wee hours of the morning, Trump's thinking about this country at 3.30 a.m. in the morning, October 1st, 2018. Here's a tweet from Trump on his Twitter feed. The new name will be the United States-Mexico-Canada Agreement, USMCA. It's a great deal for all three countries. Solves the many problems. The many deficiencies and mistakes of NAFTA. Greatly opens markets, which I have mentioned, yeah. 3.53 a.m., 3.30 a.m. in the morning. Trump's working for you. Canadian Prime, Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau yesterday called it a good day for Canada. Well, well, well. I mean, Trump's enemy's got to hate this. After negotiators worked frantically ahead of the U.S. imposed mid midnight last night deadline, Trump Trump knows how to deal, doesn't he? Yeah, which again is going to make him more popular and more uh, electable for a re-election and unstoppable. If Trump continues to go the way he's going, he's going to be landsliding another victory bigger than 2016 in 2020. Yeah. PAC preserved a key trade dispute settlement mechanism sought by Canada, even as Ottawa agreed to open up its dairy markets to U.S. farmers. Also make it harder for global automakers to build cars cheaply in Mexico. It's got to be fair. Trump vowed during his 2016 presidential campaign to tear up current U.S. trade deals, which he just did, which he blamed for a loss of U.S. manufacturing jobs, which it was. His administration has abandoned other trade accords and slapped tariffs on a number of key trading partners, particularly uh, China, yeah, to make things fair. And I think Trump, Trump did a great uh, uh, press conference this morning at the White House explaining this. He said, we send vehicles into China or, or India and, you know, they're slapped with all these, you know, it's like double to buy a motorcycle in India, he said this morning. He said, that's not fair. We send a motorcycle over there, manufacture it on here, put it over there, and they, they, it's 100%. Well, it's double the price. Which, which then is bad for business. India's reducing their really taxes they put on U.S. products. And U.S. is getting into more markets and people will buy more American-made products. He said, I don't, I don't have to put tariffs on your goods if you smarten up and trade with us. I love it. What did he say here? It's a promise made, promise kept. So what the White House tra uh, trade advisor told Fox today. NAFTA is dead. We have USMCA. Great. United States and Mexico clinched a bilateral agreement in late August. US officials intend to sign the new trilateral deal by November 30th. Mexico got on board in August, uh, September. Canada was dragging their feet, and yesterday, the deadline was last night, and Canada said, okay. <laughs> you know, there's more people that live in California than all of Canada put together. You know that, right? I think uh, the California economy, if it was a country by itself, I think it would be f the fifth or fourth largest in the world. It just beat out the UK, yeah. Now it's this, to be submitted, this uh, trade pact for approval by the U.S. Congress. See if they can get anything done.
I don't know, I'm part of the U.S. Congress. I wonder, I was I always wonder if the U.S. Congress even tie their shoes. Because the Republicans and the Democrats are basically the same. And they're run, basically, by the New World Order. It's amazing anything can get done. That's why Trump does a lot of executive decisions and orders. Because the U.S. Congress is basically run by the Vatican, the Jesuits, and they're all compromised. U.S. Senator Joni Ernst of uh, Iowa, a top farming state, praised the agreement. Praised it! In a tweet today, our farmers need stability and access to markets. Here we go. The farmers going to love this. The farmers are going to come out in droves and vote for Trump in 2020. Even uh, Democratic U.S. Senator Amy Klobuchar of Minnesota, a border state with Canada, also tweeted, quote, I'm glad... uh, Our number one trading partner, Canada, is back in the mix. Or she said, I'm glad Minnesota's number one trading partner. Minnesota's num- number one trading partner, Canada, is back in the mix. Looking forward to reviewing the terms. So the Republicans are going, yeah, yeah, right? The Republicans and the Democrats, yeah, sure. When we, listen, when you're, when you're making the farmers happy, they're voters. And the uh, senators and the Congress people, they go, ah, oh, they have to basically bow their knee to Trump like, like Joseph's brothers bowed to Joseph. So Canada, Mexico, the Democrats, the Republicans are bowing to the modern day Joseph Trump. <laughs> Trump has been brought in for such a time as this. And uh, you better be praying for him. You better be thanking God for him. Uh, And you better uh, just continue every day because he's not only making America great, he's making Canada, Mexico, and the nations great again. And go over those scriptures I gave you. Because uh, the people aren't mourning anymore. They're actually being happy to get jobs, right? Proverbs 29, verse 2, When the righteous are in authority or in government, the people rejoice. You'll know a president by their fruit, not by their blabber talk, Obama blabber talk. By the way, did I ever tell you today that Barack Hussein Obama is the Antichrist? But he is. Take a look at all my videos. I have over 3,000 videos on my my, uh, postings. YouTube, Facebook, get there at DarylLawsonLive.com or DarylLawson.com. You can see all my videos and postings 24-7. When you're there, subscribe and look at all 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 the links and postings. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for what you're doing. In the U.S., Canada, Mexico, and the nations. We've come to give people life and life abundantly. Thank you for doing that for every country on the earth. For you so loved the world that you gave your only begotten Son. Whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Thank you, Lord, that you love everybody equally. And you want everybody to be saved from their sins. Move in everyone's life, Lord. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven every day. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, by your spirit, amen. All right, that's that's what we're seeing. We're seeing the kingdom of God being poured on the earth as it is in heaven. There's no poverty in heaven. Only great trade deals. <laughs> Seriously, yeah. All right, Daryl Lawson Live is setting up. I'm out of here. Take a quick break. Come back and do another show. Look at all my videos and postings. Like I said, on my website. I appreciate all your prayers and financial support. I have a donation button on my website. God will bless you for it. Go into the Bible, Malachi chapter 3, verses 8 12. Listen, faith without works is dead. I love God. But if you love God, then you'll do his work. And if you're not born again, spirit filled, you're screwed. Listen, Jesus Christ is about to return. Give your life to Jesus. Jesus, wash my sins away. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Get in the Bible and do it. All right? And and watch and pray and, and stay ready for the return of Jesus. All right? And every day you hear and you do God's work. That's how you go forward and not backwards. And that's why we're seeing miracles. Where we, did, we didn't see miracles with other presidents. They talk a good talk. But America was always being ripped apart and shredded. That was the plan. God has hindered this plan and is affecting the world for a short time now until the next rapture happens. When we're out of here, the Great Tribulation will hit, the Battle of Armageddon, etc., etc. So if you're not ready, get ready, be ready, stay ready. And the future is bright with Jesus. All right, it's always great. We win when we're with Jesus. (laughs) 
Alright, you're lost love.com. I'm out of here. I'll see you later. Pass the video to other people. God bless you. I love you. Bye for now.